Hello, Great. welcome everybody. This is Encompass Live. It's our weekly show about things to do with libraries in some way or another. And we, I'm Sally Snyder. I'm the Youth Services Consultant for the Library Commission here in Lincoln. And um, we have guests from different parts of the country, sometimes from Nebraska, sometimes other places, sometimes as other staff people here at the commission. But today, yay, we have Jo Ann Neiman from Beatrice Public Library. She's the director there, and she's going to tell us about this stream program that they've been doing. So go ahead, Joanne, and I'll mute myself. All right. Can you hear me okay? All right. Um, like I said, I'm Joanne Neiman. I'm the director of uh, the Beatrice Public Library, and this is my friend Dee Anna Volson. Anna Wilson. I still don't know how to say her name. I just call her D. Um, she came to me, oh, a, a couple months ago and had been talking about um, uh, what do you? Uh, yeah, so um, so I was, we have an initiative here in Gage County and it's called Communities for Kids. Um, as a lot of people are familiar with and know that child care shortage is a very um, critical um, thing that we're facing right now across the state of Nebraska and across the U.S. I think as a whole. Um, but Gage County is a one of those deficit um, counties, one of those um, desert, I guess, kind of counties that I think is what they call us for child care. So in that, um, we've they hired me, um, I was a coordinator. I was the Gage County Child Care Coordinator um, through December um, for when the grant funding had ended. And um, in that, I went to a Thrive Conference and then also had met with a whole bunch of our child care providers. So about 42 providers here across Gage County and trying to find their needs, wanting to know um, what they were really looking for, what could help them be successful as a child care provider, um, and what could really help grow their programs and knowledge. And so in that, I attended a thriving children's conference in Kearney, and they had a presentation on makerspace trailers. And I know that that was something that was wanted. So, you know, a lot of our providers had wanted to see something more like a box they could check out of like different activities especially in the winter time, because it's, it's really hard to take kiddos out and um, get them outdoors when it's cold outside. So they needed to have something a little bit more to do and to give them a little bit more of a refresher of ideas. Some of these providers have been doing this for 20 to 30 years. Um, so they just needed a little bit, you know, wanted to get a little bit more ideas. And so it kind of started as this little baby seed that we planted because of the idea. I saw the Makerspace presentation and I thought, how can we bring this to Beatrice? Well, lucky me, I have a great friend named Joanne <laughs> Neiman um, that happens to be the director of our library in Beatrice. And one of the best things, you know, living in a small town is utilizing small business, utilizing, you know, our local resources and what we have. So why not showcase our library? And um, the library has it all. I mean, we have every single resource we could possibly we try, <laughs> in, you know, sitting in this building. And so I contacted Joanne and I said, hey, I would love to meet with you, pick your brain on some ideas and see if we can't throw a program together where um, instead of having to haul this trailer around and try and find a place to park it, you know, and all of this stuff, how could our providers come and utilize another resource, highlight what we have here, and be able to check out a box of resources um, that our library, you know, themselves can put, you know, put together. And Joanne has a plethora of knowledge and a lot of the STEM. So that was one of the biggest things. So from STEM built stream. So Joanne had come up with the idea, you know, why not build this around literacy and really bring in that reading side and that art. Um, and so, I mean, this this lady here, she is amazing because she is building boxes from anywhere from 18 months old to five to six years old. So, I mean, she is um, kind of digging deep and trying to find activities that are going to span across that age range and from anywhere from eight to 12 kids. I mean, there's quite a few kids in some of these home ones or home two child cares. Um, 
And so this had kind of, this idea had hatched, we met, um, she put together a box. I had a trial run with a provider, absolutely loved it, got great feedback. Then we sent it to another provider, got another, you know, great feedback, um, got some, you know, some changes, which is always great to know, you know, what they're looking for because we want to fit their needs. Um, and then also my position, I, I attend PRT meetings with our ESU um, system here in Beatrice. And then, um, you know, I also meet with our centers. So this goes beyond just in-home childcare. This is our centers and now has really expanded into our school system. So it's so awesome to see how this little tiny seed has now um, like been planted and has grown into this amazing um, project that has really been beneficial to more than just, you know, an in-home provider. Now we are seeing it used in our IEP services and ESU. Um, so it, it's just phenomenal to see it grow. So um, Joanne has now kind of taken over. So with myself with Engage, my grant program had ended in the position I was in. So um, Joanne, she really took this head on and, you know, ran with it and had put these boxes together. So I'm going to really let her now kind of talk about the rest of that. Okay. Um, do, do, can I get onto my, onto my uh, PowerPoint now, Sally? Yeah, you should be able to go ahead and You present. should be able to just go from this go screen, from screen and, and start up your PowerPoint. So it might take a second to pop up to us, but I'll let you know when I see something different. All right. Do you see it now? Yes. All right. So like she, like Dee said, um, we were teamed up together and I just thought this was a great, uh, a great thing. Uh, my background is I taught preschool for 10 years and then I taught, or then I was the children's librarian for five years and, and now I'm the director. So this just took a lot of all of my, um, your inner creativity my inner cre and I just got to go with it um, but but it's always uh, you know been STEM but I was so happy when they did art because I have an art background and then of course we threw in reading but here's here's kind of the community for kids uh, initiative that she was talking about um, and I'm glad to know it's still going in it, it when I Pulled this up. Up, it's in many um, communities. Um, yeah, so. yeah. There's uh, last I knew there was 12 C4K communities across um, Nebraska. Excellent. So, and I think they were just getting ready to add some more. So Excellent. that's great. Good, good. Okay, so um, most everybody knows stream is you know science, technology, reading, and of course I had to highlight the reading yes. because you know I got to give a big push for for the libraries. Um, art and math and like she touched a little bit on the ESU the educational service units um, we have a good community of homeschoolers here and two of the homeschoolers have checked these boxes out also and then just in talking to some of our other staff uh, one happens to be a grandma and she goes, oh, I would love this when I have my grandkids for the week because I'll have something for them to do. And I thought, oh, that's a great idea. Somebody else said, oh, we could do programs and set it up in centers and and do five different centers um, and have, you know, a, a science and technology and so on. So it, it too, for the library has kind of opened up. So how to find the boxes. Um, we, we made it so that all you had to do was put in stream. However, if you do put stream in, you might have to, um, kind of scroll down a little bit, but if you put in stream boxes, as you can see, it, it comes in, uh, comes up with all of our boxes so far. We have five and, um, so it's, they're pretty easy to, to find on the, and then you have to do come up and ask for them. They're not just on the shelf. But we did um, cooking. And so then here's a picture of, of all this, the goodies you can have in there. 
and then the um, the uh, contents to the side. So one thing I wanna highlight, you know, on these boxes, so the contents that are inside of this. So the best part about this box is when, so I as a provider, or I as a homeschool parent, you know, walk in to check out these boxes, everything is included. Um, so the library has done a great job, you know, with grant writing and being able to provide for the opportunity with the funding to continue to fill these boxes and replenish the activities and the, um, I guess, I don't know, not needs, I'm trying to think of um, just the different items that are within the boxes to be able to complete act each activity. Um, so they don't have to worry about, you know, having to get any of those particular materials for the box or for those activities. So it's really nice. Um, that they can just check it out. And the best thing is, is, you know, as they go through some of these activities, they might have another idea to expand upon and then they could go get, you know, those items and do something different or tailor it to maybe they only have some, you know, littler kids that day. And, um, but yeah, so Joanne um, and the library staff has done a fantastic job of making sure that everything you need is included in these boxes. So uh, insect boxes, um, we, I, I did a B one first, but we're hoping to do um, uh, butterflies, caterpillars, spiders, you know, bats. I had one of my uh, um, providers actually come and request to do chickens, and so we're oh, gonna yes. we're gonna start oh, put nice. put together a chicken one. But I chose to show you the seed library, or the seed box, because um, the library has had a, a seed library for almost 10 years, so it's it's kind of near and dear to me. Um, we have a, a old card catalog that we put seed packets in, and you can come and you can um, take out as many seeds as you want and go plant them and do whatever. So I thought, thought we would start with that, and as I talk about our stuff, I'm hoping that uh, D can see or everybody can see what D's going to uh, hold up. So here's science and and technology activities. Um, I have magnet wands. I'll bring it over. Bring so over. You kind of show. Okay. You can show the okay. the magnetic wands. Um, we have to go with the dirt. The they're sealed baggies, and this one just happens to be made of potting soil, and in it is uh, things that would be attracted to the magnet, but also things that are not attracted to the magnet, like a penny, so that they can figure out that, uh, oh, pen, a copper is not magnetic. Um, and then we have the magnifying glasses, and so those you can, um, look at the stuff in the dirt you can um, take them and when you get the seeds out you can look at the seeds and make them bigger so there's uh, a little bit more of an activity to do oh not sure and then and so that's the science and um, part of it and the technology oh yes don't forget cute flower my cute flower it's a a solar one so that the kids can figure out why sometimes it works and why sometimes it doesn't. And then we have for the engineering uh, and science activity too, some of these all kind of go together. Um, I've included the, the uh, a newspaper, an old newspaper in the uh, activity and the directions to make paper pulp pots. And those are in the tins, the muffin tins. But you can also make seed bombs with the same paper pulp and just put the seeds in the pulp and then turn them into a, a bomb, turn them into a ball. Um, and uh, most, so most of the stuff like this, if it requires uh, something, to do the like the newspaper. I know most people would have recyclable news or recyclable paper, but I thought the newspaper 
uh, breaks down easier. And, you know, maybe not everybody has newspapers anymore. The library has many. Do you want to show here on each of these bags that you do have of the activities, how you have your checkout code mm -hmm. and you've arranged for those in the box? Yep. And so um, they're all, all of these. And so for those uh, libraries that once I have their stats go up, <laughs> um, you can have, this is one checkout because we want to make sure we at least get the, the tins back. I don't really care about the scrap paper or or anything like that um, but if i gave i started out with 10 of the pots but it's kids have a good time making the paper too so i didn't want it to just be oh here are the pots put the dirt and seeds in it and you're done sometimes they want to to play with that but the only thing that needs to come back in this bag is the the tin and on this bag nothing needs to come back so there's no um, barcode okay and so then we're going to go to the art activity and so and you don't have to to do an illustrator i just happen to love uh eric carl <laughs> um and so again the the book and then just some scrap paper, some uh, tissue paper that you can tear and make his art. There's uh, a website that I have uh, included that talks about how Eric Carle uh, came up with his layer. Now he actually paints on the paper and then cuts the paper, but for kids, they can do whatever they want. Again, no, um, Barcode does not need to come back. Scissors, each of them got three scissors. Uh, barcode needs to come back. <laughs> but most of this stuff, I, I try to do the art projects that are recyclable, recyclable materials um, that can be found around the house. So now our reading activities. Uh, oh, and the puppets are over there, sorry. Um, each of our boxes, I hope to have uh, at least one or two puppets. These are some finger puppets. Um, and then I always try to have a board book and for the, the younger kids and uh, easy readers okay. and uh, nonfiction and then just some really great um uh some picture books yes and i love tops and bottoms because it it uh, opens so differently okay so for the for the um oh and sorry yes okay. good for you <laughs> uh, it was it was uh when we tested it out it was brought to our attention if we could have some music yeah. And so we said, oh, great, we'll, we'll add a music CD to it. Um, and then in that, that kind of led, I, I loved her idea of we planted the seed and it grows. And then here we are talking about a seed. Yeah, box. all the additional <laughs> ideas um, and so, come with it. Yeah. And so then um, I just found some of our CDs and DVDs are not going out like they used to. And so this is a great opportunity to kind of get those back out there um, but we also have streaming at the library so you could do that but i want to kind of push some of the the lower tech i guess <laughs> <laughs> um but for those who are wondering about how the how we cataloged the boxes um, we used a, a simple catalog record with just the title and um here's the there's the title and then the items in the box we we did the notes so that the front desk when they come back could um kind of know that they're, they're they came back or if something was forgotten we know that that needs to come back um and again with the barcodes that's that's another um kind of um indicator 
that if it has a barcode, it needs to come back. If not, it's yours to keep and um, do with whatever. But uh, I did, I figured uh, we could share for now because uh, we, this is just starting. We have three magnifying glasses in each box. We have three magnet wands in each box, three scissors in each box. Um, but as we get this to grow, hopefully we'll get more and more items in it. Um, some of our books, yes, do come off of the shelf, but if we had an extra book or if we had a donated book, or in some cases we bought a new book, we actually put the book in the box and that just stays in the box and stays there. And um, so we'll have one on the shelf and one in the box so that I don't take any, um, you know, book that somebody else wants to read. So we can do them kind of a little bit of both. You can have this out for up to a month. Um, and I think one of the ladies, said uh, she made hers last two weeks. Yeah. So we had enough stuff for two weeks. I was thinking enough stuff for a week. So doing science one day, technology one day, um, and reading, of course, all through it. But however they want to do it, it's up to them. But again, I mean, you do have a lot of them that have different experience levels. And so the one that, you know, had taken, the one provider had that had taken it initially for us and looked at it, she was like, oh my goodness, all of these activities, I could branch off of this and do this. Like, I, I, mm -hmm. I no way I could get this done in a week or even two weeks because, you know, she knew that she could build off of what was also in there or the activities that were in there. So right. it's, it's really neat to get that feedback. Um and to just really see that um, opportunity mm -hmm. that it creates. And I don't know, does anybody have any questions? I'm looking, I'm at, the looking at the question, question section, and I'm not seeing any questions yet, but we'll give them a couple of minutes to, to come up with something. But I see your, I see your contact, contact information, information too. Right, I just put the contact information up there. Um, since D is no longer with um, the CK4 um, with Engage, yeah, with Engage the initiative right now, um, she has uh, wonderfully given her her uh, um, personal cell phone and personal email. Uh, so if you do have any questions about uh, CK4, the children. Children yeah, initiative. if you have any questions for the C4K initiative or anything, um, if you have questions, you can let me know. And then also the best, you know, the really the best contact too for it is going to be our Engage, um, Gage Area Growth Enterprise here in Beatrice. Um, and, I, and I do have some. Yes, so their link is up there. So on their website, there's an actual tab and a page that will highlight some of the things going on and the activities happening. Um, here in the next couple months, um, I believe we're, we're hoping to have a, a nonprofit organization um, developed out of the C4K and like the funds. So it could help with more, maybe some stabilization funds or something different just to help with our providers and um, continue to help them grow and keep them sustainable um, and just help others that are interested in becoming providers as well. So again, it's really neat to see something start you know, as where you thought it would just be one small reach. And now it has, you know, it just expanded into, you know, between school systems, homeschooling, um, grandparents. It's really neat to be able to see that opportunity. And the best of it all is to know that it's coming from our public library right here in Beatrice, Nebraska. So it's awesome. I think it's a great program that if anybody would like to start within their libraries and really push out um, to those, um, different organizations or groups within their communities. Um, I encourage you to reach out to Joanne um, and I'll definitely always help in the best way that I possibly can. And um, yeah, I, I think that it's just been a really great opportunity. Well, one question, one we, question did we did have is, um, uh, Joanne, you had mentioned some other topics that you're planning, to, planning to, to, expand to expand into, into like, uh, butterflies, et cetera. 
Are there other, other topics like that? Was mostly insects, and you have a dinosaur one, and some other things. Are there other, there other overall topics that you're thinking about? Um, I'm I'm hoping to expand into like um, spring, fall, um, Halloween, um, holidays, um, so that you. The, I'm I'm. The holidays one is going to be a little more difficult because we're small. <laughs> but it's easy to, it's, I think it's probably easier to do seasons, seasons and mm -hmm. those types of things or, you know, insects or, you know, like you've got like the cooking and the planting. And so, yeah. And the cooking one, um, I would show you that one, but that one got checked out. So um, hey, that hey. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting to hear back how, how the cooking one went because uh, we had that that there was hardly any activities you needed to put in there because cooking is reading and math and science and and so everything was kind of right right there with it but i did include um just some fun um child size uh, utensils and bright colored um uh, measuring cups and spoons um, and just just things that that maybe a, ch uh, a child provider yes they probably have all those things but this is right here it's right handy they can just reach in and and use that so so still no questions there is another question, another question. okay um, uh, one of the people wants to know what does the whole package look like so when you put the books and the, the scissors or everything all together. All right, we're gonna grab, since we pulled the seed box apart, <laughs> she's gonna grab, this is the dinosaur box. So it's just an old, um, a, a, an empty paper box or- Those have great lids. Yes, exactly. And they're big and they're easy to carry. Um, and that's what, I mean, we have, we had 10 of these, and that's why it's very easy just to start um, filling them in. And so we'll continue to make make them. And I am up, I am open to any kind of, of uh, suggestion um, from anybody who, who uses these, if there is another, um, some some other avenue they want to come from or um a different book or more books or and they they can always check out more books than what comes in to the box this is just a kind of a a sampling but they can always then check out more books um for for their time so and we've developed it as a curriculum too so um you know, these providers and centers and um, those that are homeschooling and stuff can utilize this and show that this is what they're using to teach or show the parents that this is what our, you know, our, our children are doing. These are the activities. This is what how they're learning today. So um, we have developed that and we send that information out with them upon request. And, and I forgot to show uh, everything comes, we have everything that, the contents, uh, everything's in a in a notebook, and then if there's any instructions for anything like the making the paper pulp pots, um, I put a copy in there. If there's any, oh, like if I find a, a color sheet or something that a, a worksheet, a patterning for math, or anything like that, I will put it in the. Um, in the folder so that everybody knows what they can use or get an idea from it and, and of course expand from there. So, so we have another we have comment, another comment not a question, but the person says, I think this would be great to learn about your community, like having a my geography box or something. Oh, I like that. Would that. Be a good idea. You know, and and Beatrice, you know, has the homestead um, national park oh, that would be and so that that's a great idea i will 
write that down right now. I mean, those that can travel or transport too could then even expand further on that box and take them on a, you know, field trip out to the homestead or, you know, learning about it. And we have a lot of history here in Beatrice. Um, so it'd be really neat to be able to showcase, you know, buildings and- And our museum. Yes. Yeah. Nope, that was a great idea. Thank you. And we have another question. Have another question. How did you How promote did you this? Promote this? since it is not sitting out in the stacks or anything. Okay, so that was something else that Dee helped with. Um, she called her um, providers and invited them to the library, and we had kind of a show and tell, just like we did for you guys. Uh, and then uh, I think you went to ESU then after that. Yep. and. Um, talk to them we after this we will put it on Facebook um, every once in a while just to kind of give it a push um, we have flyers out in uh, at the front desk and we we talk about it a lot to everybody and it's been showcased in our newspaper um, and like some of the things going on with engage and then also um, I think just the biggest thing is, you know, your social media push. I mean, that's where a lot of, you know, people, you know, are looking at things um, and looking, you know, that's where a lot of your engagement is there. And so and we have providers, you know, that have checked out the, the boxes and have then posted on their pages. But here in Beatrice, we also then have a, um, like a child care provider Facebook page. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple individuals that have the access to post on there. So I've had providers that have um, posted it and pushed it that way. And then once in a while, you know, we'll reach out to them and have them repush that. So the biggest thing is just, you know, marketing and pushing it out as far as, you know, I think through those social media branches. Um, and then word of mouth, I think, is going to spread it a lot faster too. Um, a lot of our providers here in this community, for sure, are you know that tight knit, and so you know they're talking about, okay, why well, did this with my kiddos this week or that week, and um, and then I just by happenstance, honestly, by saying you know what we had going on with the C4K initiative and um, just the program and talking in one of my ESU meetings, it expanded from there, and they actually informed me that they you know, we're going to be utilizing and um, using it in their in-home visits and stuff. So um, it just kind of, you know, really, I don't know, snowballed and blew up, you know, from there. And mm -hmm. so that was a lot of that too, is that word of mouth. Um, and we have, um, just like the providers, there's a, a homeschool <clears throat> page and, um, you know, the homeschoolers can share uh, their experiences with it, and and, uh, it, and it might be something that they use differently. Um, so I'm I'm encouraging them as they use it to come back and tell me how they did it or what they did with it, um, and kind of work yeah. from there. So it's neat to see oh, the different yeah. ways it's been utilized. So that's great. A couple of more questions. One is. Are the boxes available to all patrons? Yes. Yes. Anybody can, Anybody can have them. Um, they will be it, with a regular card. They can check it out for their regular two weeks. Um, with a uh, provider card or a homeschool card, they can check it out for a month because we put that into an uh, institution card. So. Oh, interesting. interesting. Mm -hmm. And we also have the question, have the question how, has how has circulation been, been? And, and are items being returned, returned intact in good condition? condition? Are there any are there penalties any for missing for items? items? Um, we have so far so good. <laughs> we have we have gotten them back, um, and uh, even with uh, so some of the oh you know the. The paper stuff that even comes back, and and that's fine. We'll we'll re reuse it. We'll restack it and or restash it. Um, but yeah, so far everything has come back okay. Um, we've only been doing this, like I said, for maybe a month. A month. Um, so it's it. Uh, I I kind of foresee the summer it happening a little bit um, more 
because more kids will be home from school and what have you. And maybe we we go to find um, more of a school age because right now it is uh, like 18 months to five years, but it might be that we go and expand with, um, you know, coding things on the computer for school age kids to go with the themes or, um, you know, harder experiments or whatever um, that we haven't we haven't expanded on yet because we haven't had anybody request that yet. Sounds like you can go many different directions. I agree. I agree. I just think that this was such a, a I was so thankful to for, to Dee for coming. It like she said, it had started out with a um, makerspace idea and Beatrice does have a makerspace, but all of that stuff you need to come to the library for. And I, I don't know how many um, 18 month olds would really get into uh, watching the 3D printer print <laughs> or the laser cut or cut, I don't know. Uh, but uh, they can certainly uh, bring the older kids in. We have a button maker that, that we have kids come in on early out Wednesdays and make their buttons. And so we do have some things, there's a t-shirt press and things like that. So the older kids can utilize that more. They, that cannot be checked out. They actually do have to come to the library for that. But this is something for the young kids that can be taken home and worked on in, in the provider's home and then brought back and, We'll refer, refurbish it and send it back out again. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Well, I don't well, see I don't any more questions. questions. Um, really want to really thank want you for sharing, sharing all this all information, information and and uh, how you got started and how you're working your way along. And um, I think people there's going to be a lot of people pondering this possibility. Well, I mean, I hope so because I just I think that it uh, I'm going to put it back up to the uh, big pager. Uh, I I just think that there's so many possibilities and that's why I love this this program within Compass Live is that we can all share just things that we think uh, might work and then expand upon it and and with like the the suggestion for the community know your community i think that's wonderful um i may have come up with it a long time in the waiting but i'm glad somebody else came up with it and we can run with it um that will be the next one i work on i think because i just i think uh with again summer coming um that would be a nice uh, thing to do work in connection with um the homestead park and um our museum and the museum and just other things around town so i thought that was a great so thank you for whoever whoever brought that up but that's that's why i love uh this platform is because we can just share our ideas and get more ideas and and just build on it so again thank you so much i'm gonna steal back control if i'm lucky okay. That would yes, be great. Thank you. Oops. I'm supposed to be able to do this. Okay. okay. Oh, this sounds so sad. Dismiss Joanne Neiman, presenter. I don't mean to dismiss you, but I have to take control back. <laughs> well, that's okay. I've been dismissed before. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to. Um, Oh dear, I think I lost her. No, that's my fault. Okay. I did want to say um, that I didn't say earlier is that the slides and the, the recording will all be available after the program's over and, and uh, process saved. Um, Krista is not here today, so she can do that in the future for everybody. And I do want to see if I can now um, 
go to our web page and show you how to find which I can't quite let me see I'm going to try sharing my screen again here we go I should be able to there we go now oh good you get all all of me <laughs> There's, there's the web page. So I'm going to show you where you can find things in the future. This is our main web page. And over here in our search box, if you type in Encompass, you'll see that Encompass Live comes down and then our newsletter. So we're going to click on Encompass Live. And this is the first thing that comes up with the star by it. So we'll click on that. And then you go to our Encompass Live portion of the web page where you can see the upcoming shows listed here. Next week will be um, Encompass Live program planning with a marketing mindset. So that should be pretty interesting too. And right below that list is the archived Encompass Live shows. So last week it was No More Summertime Blues. And then when this one is ready to go, it'll go up on here. And you can just click on that. And you'll see, let's just check this one out. Then you'll see here's view the recording. So there, if there had been any like a handout page or something like that, it would be listed here too. So you could click on that and go to that page. Um, but on this one, it happens to be only the viewer recording. There, these are all of the shows that we've ever had since um, 2009. So we do have the option here, it says show or search all the archives. I'm not gonna scroll down because it's a long way down, but you can just look for the most recent 12 months. It's a weekly show most of the time. And so you can look through here for things that are more current. If you do search all the archives and come up with something from several years ago, um, we have to point out that information changes, things change, if they have websites listed there, websites change sometimes, so you're not sure um, how complete the information will be anymore. But there still could be snips, snippets of information that will be useful to you. So please give it a try. Check out the Encompass Live. And we do have uh, a Facebook page for Encompass Live, but I'm not as adept at all of the different options as Krista is. So I'll just show you this and say thank you so much for joining us. I thought this was a most interesting program, and I hope you did too. And if you want to view it later, again, just want to remember something of what they said so you can go uh, call it up and, and zip ahead a little bit to find the part you wanted to see again, it will all be on this page. So thank you and have a great day. Bye.